He seemed so nice. He seemed fatherless. That's what he seemed. And he finally had enough of it, and he finally flipped his flipped out, and, and people died. But while the fatherless are capable of violence, they are not capable, not as capable, and this isn't a universal rule, but it is a tendency. They are less able to assert themselves. They are less able to resist authority. And the reason is because they lack the sense of self-worth that flows, so far as I can see, primarily from a father. If that father is, if if the father is missing, the child is going to be impaired. Doesn't happen 100 percent of the time. There's people who live, grow up in fatherless homes, and they they survive and even flourish. But odds are they won't, and everyone knows it. There is no evidence to support the contention that children who grow up in motherless homes are similarly impaired. And the idea that a child being raised without a father is more easily oppressed, not only as a child, but even as an adult, is borne out in the laws of Rome, the Roman Empire, where the children of free men, in the event that there was a, the family broke up, there was a divorce or whatever, the children of free men always went with a father. The children of slaves went with a mother. They understood clearly 3,000 years ago that if you want a nation that's capable of being free, you have got to keep those kids associated with their fathers. And here we are in a society that celebrates the maternal presumption, which incidentally is a title of nobility and could probably, which is prohibited by the both state and federal constitutions, certainly by the federal constitution from both the federal government and state governments, shouldn't be allowed to issue any titles of nobility, and that's what they do with the maternal presumption. It's subject to challenge. But lives are being ruined and destroyed every single day because the women of this country uh, will be damned before they'll admit that they are not competent to raise children on their own. And I started this out saying the women, the American women have become monstrous. There isn't a man in this room, in this room, in this world, who can safely marry an American woman? How can you dare? You know half of the time it's going to end up in divorce, and what's going to happen then? You're going to be ruined, fella. Half the marriages in this country end in divorce. And why do they end in divorce? Government statistics out of the 90s, I don't know what the current statistics are, but statistics in the 90s, government said 70% of all divorces were filed by women, which means the poor little innocent moms are about twice as likely to file for divorce as men. Men's groups say the number is closer to 90% filed by women. And the courts, of course, love it because they understand that women will go, off their, go out of their mind every 30 days while they're having their period, and they'll see the toilet seat up and call a lawyer and file for divorce, which just generates great money for two attorneys. It'll ruin the family, it'll destroy the children's lives, but women aren't about to step back from it. They're not about to do what's right because everybody in the society is running around praising everybody who's got a vagina. It's got to end. And now, now we're in a situation where young women today are under incredible stress. And it's a shame and it's unfortunate, but they are going to wind up paying for the excesses of their mothers and their grandmothers. We've had two generations of women who've been spoiled rotten. We've had two generations of women who have collectively murdered over 40 million children in this country. We have two generations of women who have collectively murdered six times as many people as Hitler was accused of murdering in the form of the concentration camps during World War II. And yet we're all going to sit back and say, you little moms are just so precious and you're just so dear. Wake up. You are destroying lives around you. And it's high time that the women of this country became responsible rather than smug, conceited, and understanding and delighting in the fact that they can destroy the lives around them. It's high time that it comes to an end. I, what I'm, and, I, and I want you to understand something. I am a feminist. You understand that? This program right now is dedicated to the idea of equal rights for women. But it's also dedicated to equal responsibility. And that's something that women are not about to assume. They have been unwilling. They say, oh, the responsibilities, silly rabbit, the responsibilities are for men. It's like tricks that serial some of you might remember. But rights are for women and responsibilities are for men. It has to end. It's one of the ways this society is being destroyed. And women, again, they are right now about, what, a quarter of the children that are conceived in this society are being aborted. They're being murdered by their own mothers. Of the remaining three, you know, for every four children that are conceived, mom murders one out of four. 
Now we can sit back and say, well, it's only one out of four. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you something. Of the remaining three who survived, odds are mom gave serious consideration to murdering at least one or two of them. You understand that? Your dear little sainted mom, she's murdering one, on average one out of every four children that she conceives. And she's probably thinking very seriously about whacking one or two more. While we sit back and celebrate how sweet the women of this country are. After one in four is murdered in the form of abortion, three are given or brought to live birth. One of those three will be born out of wedlock. Mom is so busy playing the slut that she doesn't actually care to go out and get herself married. She's so busy. <laughs> you know, one of the things that just absolutely appalls me is the idea that women think they can screw like a man. And that's where this society has come. Thanks to the pill in large measure, women are out there fornicating, moving from man to man, just having a great old time. It's the sort of thing men can afford to be promiscuous because men in the end don't wind up carrying the children. Women, in theory, shouldn't be able to afford to be promiscuous. They can now that we have the pill, and a lot of them are promiscuous even without the pill. But the truth of the matter is a woman cannot screw like a man. And we have a society that is encouraging women to believe they have this equality. There's no such thing. Nothing could be further from the truth. This whole thing, this is a subject that I get off on, I suppose, about once every two years. And I imagine I deliver a pretty similar rant every time I do it. But something has got to be done. And it isn't going to be done simply by men yelling and screaming over a damn radio program. It's going to be done if and when the women in this country finally get to a point where they start behaving in a responsible manner and begin to recognize that they are not the beginning and end of the earth. That the world does not exist for the sole purpose of making them happy. That their happiness, which is fragile on a good day, is not sufficient cause, reason, rationale to destroy the lives of their own children. Where was I going with it? Again, with, let me get back on this notion of four children. Not every four children. One is aborted. One is born without a father. And of the remaining two that are born into wedlock, one of them is going to go through a divorce. Right now, we only have one child out of every four that's conceived. Only one is going to actually live and have an opportunity to have a positive relationship with their biological father. One in four. The other three will be separated from their biological father either by murder or by simple promiscuity, or by divorce. And somewhere between 70 and 90% of those divorces will be filed by our sainted little moms. I watched the Dr. Phil program today, and I see this little girl whose life is being destroyed. And it is. She's out there screwing 50 guys. She's 15 years old. She admits to having sex with 50 guys in the last couple of weeks as a prostitute. Where do you think it's going to go? But it is, you look at the woman sitting next to her, her mother. You look at her. You look at the woman who was threatening to sue Dr. Phil and blaming everybody but herself. The best thing that could have happened to that little girl is if her mother had died years ago and that little girl had been left to be raised by her father. That little girl would have had a chance at life. And somewhere along the line, someone has got to get the women in this country under control. I don't know how that's going to happen. I think it might happen in the context of an economic collapse. I'd say it might be one of the silver linings of the upcoming collapse in our economy and our society because things are going to get so damn difficult that we will not be able to afford the fiction of the maternal presumption. We're not going to be able to afford the lie that women are competent to raise children by themselves. It's not only true that the society won't be able to afford it, even women aren't going to be able to afford it. And if and when that takes place, then we will approach a time at least where once again we might even have something like a stable family. We aren't going to have much money, but we might have a stable family. Or maybe not, who knows. But there is something deeply wrong with the female gender in this country. And it's not exclusively them, it's wrong with men too. It's not just a question where women are wrong, men are wrong. We've put up with this crap. We spend too much time saying, yes dear, yes dear, yes dear. The dress doesn't make your ass look fat dear. Yeah, it does your ass is fat. Stop asking me to lie. You are fat. You understand? It's the way God made you. Grow up. If you can't, if you need to extort lies out of everybody, for God's sake, you know, again, take the knife to your wrists and be gone. Well, I guess I got that more or less off my chest for right now, but it is one of those things that it's a fundamental problem 
It's a fundamental problem in this society. You know, we see this. They did this to the black African-American community. The African-American community was closing the economic gap relative to whites after World War II. And starting out in 1963, we decided they were African-Americans who were making progress. They were making gains on their own. They had what was at that time a high rate of children being born out of wedlock. It was something like 10%, only 1% or 2% among whites. But the government, Democrats, decided to pick up the white man's burden and help our beloved black brothers and sisters. And they would provide welfare, aid to families with dependent children. And part of the condition of that damned welfare program was they give money, they give money to black women. You have all the children you want. We'll pay for them. But there was a condition. And the condition is you've got to get that old black tomcat out the house. In other words, we'll give you the money, but you can't keep a man in the family. And the black women, like a bunch of damn fools, they took the money. 